Isenbard Kingdom Brunel, Great Ships. While Brunel was building the Great Western Railway from London to Bristol, he had an amazing idea. What if the passenger's steam-powered journey didn't just stop in Bristol? What if it could take them all the way to New York? At that time, all ocean-going ships were powered by sail. Sailing ships were slow and travelled at the mercy of the wind. You never knew how long the voyage would take. A steam-powered ship would be fast and arrive on time. It could run to a timetable, just like a steam train. People said that it was impossible for a steamship to cross the Atlantic because it could never carry enough coal. Brunel knew that the carrying capacity of a ship increases as the cube of its dimensions, while the water resistance only increases as the square of its dimensions. This meant that a very big steamship could carry enough coal to cross the Atlantic. Brunel started designing the biggest ship in the world, a steam-powered ship. No one had ever done anything like it before, and Brunel had never designed a ship before. The Great Western was made of wood, and, like other steam-powered ships at the time, it had big paddle wheels. The Great Western was built in Bristol, and on the 31st of March, 1838, it sailed to New York in record time. The age of ocean-going liners had come. If you go to Bristol today, you can visit Brunel's second ship, the SS Great Britain. The Great Britain is housed in the Bristol Dry Dock where it was first built. It is surely the most important, innovative ship ever built. Brunel had seen two small ships that had set him thinking. The Rainbow was a small ship with an iron hull. Brunel realised that a ship made of iron would be much stronger and lighter than a ship made of wood. There is also a limit as to how big a wooden ship can be made, but an iron ship could be built as big as you wanted. Brunel also saw the Archimedes, a small steamship powered by a screw propeller instead of paddle wheels. This was a very new idea. Brunel borrowed the Archimedes to carry out tests and saw that a propeller was much better than paddle wheels in every way. Brunel put these two new ideas together into what would be the biggest ship ever made so far. The bigger size would give a smoother passage than a smaller ship. The SS Great Britain was also to be more luxurious than any ship before her. Her interiors were modelled on fashionable London hotels. Even Queen Victoria came to marvel at her. Edward Snell wrote in his diary, I took Jane this morning to see the Great Britain, went all over her and was highly gratified. The saloons were very beautiful and hung with paintings representing the ship herself in various situations. The SS Great Britain was launched in July 1843 by Prince Albert and her long working life continued until 1933. At the time, no one was sure that Brunel's daring new ship would work. Today, all ocean-going ships have metal hulls and propellers. If you visit SS Great Britain today, you will find that she also tells another story. At the time, people were leaving the British Isles in huge numbers to seek a new life in America and across the British Empire, to places like Australia and New Zealand. The better off passengers would travel in style in individual cabins and luxurious rooms set aside for them. The poor travelled in the crowded steerage with rows of bunks and precious little privacy. 
For them, it was a desperate gamble to escape grinding poverty and hardship with the hope of a fresh start and a better life elsewhere. Today, their descendants value the contribution that these brave pioneers made to make these great nations what they are today. Picture those emigrants, perhaps seasick in a storm, or re-reading that last letter from home as the Great Britain took many of them to their new home far away. Today millions of their descendants are scattered throughout the world because their ancestors once made that hazardous journey from these islands on ships like SS Great Britain. <laughs>